What's up everyone? Just waiting for Roman to join in. Hope you're well. What's up Pratish? Hello everyone. Ah, the man has entered the room. Just connecting right now. Oh, it's coming. I can hear you, but I can't see you yet. Yeah, cannot see you too, but it says connecting. <laughs> this is odd. Okay. It's probably the slowest. Uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's weird. I don't know why I hear you, but I can't see you. Right. Uh, here we go. Oh, here we go. There you go. All right. How are you? Not too bad yourself. Very good. Tout va bien. Tout va bien. <laughs> like, uh, like on a Sunday. That's good. That's good. What time is uh, you and I were early we have, in Chicago, right? Yeah, five we have one hour. Yeah, it's five o'clock for us. Yeah. Awesome. So All do right. you have that beautiful weather that we have? Uh, it's actually nice. It's nice out. It's cold, but it's nice. We have nice okay. Sun. I mean, today it's like at least 75. It's like, wow. Yeah. Amazing. Bonjour. Oh, we have some, uh, we have some French in the room. Tony. Uh -huh. Bonjour. Bonjour. Yeah. So we, we're going to do it in English, but if you are yes. fellow Frenchman or you have any question in French, we have the ability to respond in either <laughs> languages, <laughs> but we wanted to have uh, our beautiful French accent on the left. <laughs> Especially mine, I guess. <laughs> oh no, 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 it's nothing. Even even my mom this morning told me that you had a beautiful accent. <laughs> All right, so All today right. we are making Madeleine. We are making your recipe of Madeleine. Um, yes. I don't know if you guys here know what Madeleine is. It's a uh, delicious um, baked good, um, a very classic, very traditional that we eat, uh, I guess, whatever time of the day, whether with your coffee or in the afternoon with your tea yeah. or late at night, if you have a little craving. Um, I personally love Madeleine, so I'm super happy that you decided to cook that recipe, but we're making a special version today. So you want to tell us a yeah. bit more about what's so special about that Madeleine? Exactly. I mean, the, the most specific item that we are going to use, and I'm not trying to show any brand here, but it's really the type of flour is what we call a, a sprouted white whole wheat flour. So we are going to change that flour with the traditional wheat flour, you know. But the advantage of this is that it's going to give a, a very different texture in the, in the madeleine. It's going to, go, to give a very short bite. Um, it will kind of melt very fast in the mouth. Now, because it is a bread flour originally and not a pastry flour, the madeleine is not going to have you know what we can see sometimes on Instagram, that very neat bump. Uh, yeah. bump. The, the bump is, is, is going to be there, but not as, uh, not as neat. Pronounced, yeah. Because, because of the type of flower. But you will see the texture and the color because it's still a, a white whole wheat. So it will give kind of a amber color, you know, almost brown. I'm sure you've seen it on the, on the dough you prepare, uh, the batter you prepared yeah. last night. So yeah, More dense, that's, yeah. Yeah. That's definitely what makes that uh, that Madeleine very different. It's for sure the flour. Yeah, so if people don't know the difference between baking and pastry flour, pretty much one is going to be more heavy, more dense. So therefore, it's going to collapse a little bit more over pastry flour that's much lighter. Uh, and this is why it's used in cake because you want to create a beautiful sponge and light, uh, light aspect. So it would be a bit different, but it would be equally as delicious. Uh, definitely. So if you guys are following us at the same time, uh, make sure your ovens are on. I think it's very important because it's actually a short bake. Um, Good call. Perfect. You know? <laughs> see, see, <laughs> this is part of the, uh, the housekeeping as we call it. That's the fine. That's, that will come. <laughs> but, um, and we also uh, saw something that's super important is the fact that we actually made one batch yesterday or at least this morning wherever you you can make it but you need to at least rest it for 12 to 24 hours do you want to let us know why it needs to be uh rested but technically it's it i mean it's for two main, main reasons first of all we are adding a lot of butter so this butter you know needs to kind of stabilize in the butter and will work as well with the with the flour you know because that flour 
needs to absorb and needs to, uh, you know, to be able to, to develop. If we were to mix it and bake it, technically we will get like a galette. It will be very yeah. flat. You are not going to get the, that, uh, that bump. And also because we are adding some uh, baking powder. The baking powder is usually a double activity. You have the, the, that activity we will have in the chiller overnight. You will have some proofing happening plus the one happening inside the oven. So that's why it's a, it's a double reason. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you look at the recipe, there's almost as much butter as there is flour. So it is very telling on, on how much it is. And even last night when I was making it and I poured the butter and I was like, wow, that's a lot of butter. <laughs> but I, I, I it think it's also, it's also very, like, uh, very uh, true to like the French baking um, as well, right? It's like heavy on butter, but like there's a big difference. I mean, obviously butter is bringing a lot of flavors as yep. well. And I saw some people commenting with brown noisette, um, which is uh, brown butter. So it gives that little hazelnut, nutty flavor to the butter when we cook it a little bit more. In this case, we're not doing a, uh, a brown noisette. We are not doing, but it is a possibility. Huh? We can definitely yes. do it, uh, no doubt. After the brown noisette, and I, I didn't do it in that recipe because of the choice of the flour, um, the butter is kind of darker. If we were to add a, a brown noisette or brown butter, the batter will get really, really dark, you know? And, yeah. um, and that's, that's one of the reasons. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Um, shall we start? Let's go. Let's go. All right. So I have my mold too. So uh, I think I have a bit of a smaller, I think you have like the yeah. larger, yes. So obviously we're gonna have some different cooking time. Um, yeah. You have a larger madeleine, which I believe cooks about eight to 10 minutes. Exactly, yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna take a guess on mine, probably we'll call in about four to five minutes. Probably. Uh, regardless, it's a very short uh, cooking time. So we're gonna be able to show you a batch and while the batch is cooking, we can also talk about anything related to baking. Uh, Romain is a specialist. I am Romain too, but I'm a specialist when it comes to boulangerie and baking. So if you have any question, uh, feel free to pop them in the little question box down below where Romain is. And I will look at them while our uh, little Madeleine are baking and we'll answer at our best. Again, if you have a baking uh, question, it's now is the time. We have a pro, uh, we have a pro on the live. So take advantage. All right, so I will follow, um, I will follow along. So if you wanna walk me through the recipe and I will do as you say. Right, so we are going actually, so first of all, I'm sorry for uh, some of our Americans and North American people who are working with cups and ounce and uh, pound. I'm French, I'm proud, I'm using grams. So I, I don't think it's got nothing <laughs> to be doing with French. It's just being proper and precise. And you know what? I was actually like thinking of, uh, talking about that the other day. I was like, I want to write a cookbook and, and you should have no pounds, no cups because <laughs> I translated all my recipes into grams, uh, sorry, into cups and it just doesn't work. So we yeah, have to it stay doesn't. with grams. It doesn't. So we'll start with our uh, 100 gram of eggs, whole egg. So technically that's around two eggs if it's yeah. like medium size, you know? Yeah. So we'll put that in our bowl. Then the egg yolk. So I put two units. Usually, usually an egg yolk is around 20, 25 grams. Uh, so around 40 grams hein, if we are to, to really. Uh... So that is if we're using large eggs, obviously. Yes, yes. So too precise. Because right. obviously there's all different kind of eggs. It also depends yeah. on the chickens, where you're from. So that's exactly. why also we're not telling you one egg, but we tell you 100 grams of egg because obviously chicken make different eggs of different sizes. So yep. it's, it's, hard to, it's hard to say like an egg is exactly a measurement. So that's why we have to weigh everything. And that's why it's better, exactly. That's why it's better to, to weigh it in. Um, I've seen a, a question about the recipe. The recipe is on, uh, on my story for sure. I think Romain, yeah. you did post the, yeah. it's on, the recipe it's on as my, well. Yeah, it's on my highlights as well. So if you guys All want right. to refer back to it, um, after the live or as the live is going on, you can go back. It's in my highlights. So I'll be here forever. Great. Well, as long as, long as Romain told me, he can stay up. If of course. Like, is Definitely. No, 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 like, no, no. No, we're taking it down. <laughs> no, no. There's nothing protected in baking. You know, it's all about sharing. <laughs> it's true. I'm, I'm all about that for sure. Then we are going to add our sugar. So uh, okay. we are at 100 grams of sugar. 
and we are going to uh, um, mix it and almost like uh, emulsify it. You know, we want yeah. to foam, foam that a little bit. So basically what's going to happen when we whisk, it's going to start to get a little wider and it's going to yeah. get a little, little bubble. And when you stop whisking, you're going to start to see that little foam on top, right? But that's how you know. When your arm feel sore, this is when you have to, uh, <laughs> to stop whisking. <laughs> So what you see, the bakers have like really like buff shoulders and, and big arms. It's all the whiskey they got to do. Well, if, you are, if ever you are lazy, you can use a, a mixer. an electrical or a mixer. Absolutely. I because was looking I'm, at it yesterday. I'm just playing around here, but as you can see in the back, I have the, I have the mixer. I'm usually doing it with a mixer. Mine, mine is right <laughs> here. It's hidden, but it's right there. <laughs> It's true. I mean, you know, I think it's based on the quantities, especially when you work with volume. I mean, we're making a small batch, so if you're to yeah. make a lot of quantities, I would highly suggest as well you use your electric mixer. It definitely is a plus. But not so, everybody has one. Yeah, exactly. And so we can show that it's it's working without. And so see, it's kind of a little bit foamy. Yep. Uh. Which one is Roma? <laughs> yeah, today you have two Roma. So. <laughs> it's a double. Whether Ro Roma will answer all your questions today. <laughs> all right. That's good. All right. Just realized I forgot to my lemon, so let's just grab that. Oh, nice. Okay. So then the next is we are going to add the flour. Yeah. I will recommend to sift your flour in advance, you know, yes. just to avoid the lump, especially with this type of flour that uh, a white whole wheat or a whole wheat flour is usually more lumpy. So yeah. just to be easier, we sift, we sift that flour in advance. Yeah. Which I did to myself. And then if you guys can see, I also Perfect. have my little foamy, foamy little mix. And I will so, add my flour. Flour. Then the, we can put the baking powder. Okay, perfect. Just gonna grab that. Ba baking powder is the same. I did sift a little bit because you know sometimes it stays in, like in your kitchen. You you have some humidity, so it gets a little bit lumpy. Yeah. So same. I also. Uh... It's funny you said that because actually um, I don't usually sift the baking powder, but I did that last night. I was just like, you know what? I looked at it. I was like, I think it needs to be sifted because you could see. There's like a little bit of, uh, it was like crumbled together. Exactly, yes, yes. And we're going to whisk So, and yeah, and right now what we are going to do, uh, it's really like a, a gentle mix, you know. We did yeah. our emulsification with the yes. egg, and now it's only incorporating ingredients. Awesome. So that's easy. It's actually a really re easy recipe to do. I think what's important, and it's kind of like doing the key steps, and also make sure you have really good ingredients. Um, a good flour, good butter, and we're going to talk about the butter shortly. But your ingredients is what's going to make the difference between a good baked good and then an excellent baked good. I don't know if you agree exactly. with Exactly. Oh, totally, totally. And, and that's why, actually, I'm playing around on that recipe, you know, of a madeleine and changing just some ingredients to, to develop some new flavor and new texture. Yeah. And if uh, people haven't checked your, your page yet, you, they will see if you go on... Uh, romance pages you'll see there's a lot of things he's been doing with like different classic recipe a uh, made his own um, so it's pretty awesome to see there's like an evolution into into baking as well which is like such a classic uh, art but i like that you actually try to switch it up and make some novelties exactly yeah 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 and it's uh, every time playing with ingredients or with process you know because yes. the process can make such a big difference of course all right so as you can see the batter is like thickening you know, the color, the color is a little bit like amber, brownish. So it's really, I really like, I, I like to be different. You know, it's, it's, it's cool to do something. Yeah, you, that... you, you know, there's molds, but sometimes you have to be, you know, outside the box and you have to be outside of the mold. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right. We're going to add the vanilla. Yes. So this after, it's really a matter of uh, flavoring. So we can do whatever we want from here, you know. Yeah, I just want to add some uh, little bit of vanilla just to have uh, to enhance a little bit, you know, the, the flavors. It's not going to be a vanilla madeleine, but, you know, it's going to be so there. It's a hint for sure. And you could add lavender. You could add uh, some cocoa powder and having like more like chocolate. You can have some coffee. 
I mean, Madeleine is a good vehicle to add kind of like whatever flavor Definitely. you wish. Yeah. Although Then you have we... to think about that, and you might uh, agree with me or disagree, but I feel like if you, if you add cocoa powder or coffee, you might have to tweak the recipe a little bit. Yes. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the, the cocoa powder, the coffee usually will dry out the, the batter. Actually, for this recipe, if you are looking at other Madeleine recipe, uh, in matter of eggs, I also incorporated a little bit more liquid because this flour absorbs a little bit more as well. So for whenever you add a new ingredient, you need to kind of readjust. If you are putting, for example, more sugar, you will probably need to reduce your hydration because the sugar acts really and liquefy a little bit everything. So for sure, yeah, we'll have to, to work on each ingredient. Yeah. I think I see right now somebody is saying, uh, Sona is asking what we put so far in a recipe. So far, we blanched uh, the egg, the egg yolk, the sugar. Then we added our flour and we've added our baking powder as well as our vanilla. That's where we are and, so far. And now we, are, we can add the, the honey. Okay, and we're going to add the honey. So honey, uh, it's actually, uh, of course, going to help on the flavor, huh, no doubt. But yeah. also on the texture of the of the brioche, I was about to say of the <laughs> of the texture of the madeleine. Um, okay. Honey is an inverted sugar, so we'll actually keep some of the moistness. Um, so you can definitely replace honey, for example, with uh, um, uh, uh, ah maple syrup. Sorry, mm -hmm. uh, maple for syrup actually medium. give <laughs> exactly, and maple <laughs> syrup gives amazing flavor in the in the madeleine. I tried in that recipe; it's amazing. Same quantity. I'm, I added the same quantity. Okay, so maple syrup instead of the honey. Of the what honey. about what about other sugar uh, type of sugar uh, like agave or stuff like that? Would that work the uh, same? Yes, it would work the same, and you would add the you would add the same quantity also. Awesome, good to yeah. know. Because actually, I did a recipe the other day, and it was calling for corn syrup, and I don't really like to use corn syrup yeah. uh, for many many good reasons. So I switched to agave, and I had the same quantities, and it worked. I was a little scared. But uh, it worked uh, exactly the same. Yeah, because technically, you know, this is type of invert sugar, so glucose, uh, honey, and all these products, they, uh, you can add the, the exact same quantity. Awesome. All right. So now we have everything mixed. So we can uh, uh, melt our butter. Okay. So here I have the butter. I'll just put a few seconds in the, in the microwave. Or, oh, yep, you are doing the right way. I will, I will use... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm anti-microwave. I you see like you see the space right here in my kitchen. There used to be the microwave. It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I mean, I'm not saying you know like I'm I'm right or wrong. I just said that uh, I just don't use them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, that's. I think that's the chef in you. You know? Yeah, it could be. It could be. You know, some people will be like, this guy's an idiot, but whatever. I'll stick by my beliefs. <laughs> <laughs> What about the lemon? Are we adding the lemon zest yet? Lemon, yeah. We'll, we'll add it really at the last minute. Okay. We do the, that butter first, and okay. then we'll, uh, we'll add the lemon. Gotcha. So, lemon, uh, in my kitchen, actually, I'm not really, uh, don't have the lemon zester. Okay. So, I totally just, like, you know, with a knife, uh, went around the, the lemon and just cut, like, very fine. Um, there you go. That's, will... that's, the, that's the chef in you. <laughs> <laughs> it will give it will give a little bit more of a bite, you know. Yes. Um, but uh, it 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 works the same, and you know, you don't need to buy uh, tools for everything. It's true. <laughs> However, I'm using a microplane. I do love them. It's probably one of my favorite tools in the kitchen. The microplane. I use it. I use oh, so yeah. much lemon in my cooking. Yeah. So I think I have like two or three of those always in my bag. <laughs> But see, that's my baker inside me. It's like I'm not using that much of, uh, of this. So That's true. That's true. <laughs> Do you have them in your, you did make a, um, um, your, uh, oh my God, what's the name? It's skipping me now. Uh, your uh, Queen Yaman. Did you, do, did you try with lemon? Because I know we talked about that a few months ago when you yeah. were trying to, to add lemon to your Queen Yaman. So actually, I'm, uh, I'm, doing a, I'm giving a Queen Yaman class uh, uh, middle of this month. There you go. Yeah. I didn't even and... know. I didn't even know. <laughs> the, plug, the plug was perfect. <laughs> and it, it's an online, online class. And I'm actually going to do uh, a lemon poppy seed uh, Queen Yaman. Perfect. But I'm not using, I mean, I'm using a little bit of zest. But I'm actually, but it's in my freezer. Here. I can show you guys. Huh? 
I'm doing like a kind of a comfy. Oh, lovely. So this will come in the center of the Queen Yaman. So it's like lemon zest, lemon juice, sugar, and then a little bit of uh, gel en gomme that yes. you're going to put inside the, the Queen Yaman. And I'm preparing a, a poppy seed, a toasted poppy seed sourdough wow. to put in my dough of the Queen Yaman. So like that, here we go, we have our lemon that poppy seed. Amazing. And at the, uh, actually, at the, when we kind of like started to talk, so like early pandemic, I did a video, I did a Queen Yaman video and I used your recipe and you were kind enough to kind of like help me as I was going through the process. So if you guys look at my videos from like a year ago now, I made, uh, I did make Romain's uh, recipe for his Queen Yaman at the time. Are there any uh, common mistakes or any steps that we need to take uh, more caution in when making this? To be honest, there is not really uh, a lot of uh, step. I think what's important is really the eggs that you want to uh, emulsify nicely and, and get that foamy eggs. But then it's the resting, just adding, adding ingredient and the resting. Yes, you need to have at least, I, I recommend the minimum of six hours in the chiller. You know, when we do this type of quantity, because it's, uh, it's not that much. Uh, if you do bigger batch, for sure, at least 12 hours. Awesome. All right. Are we so ready with the butter? Yeah, I got my butter. All right. So I'm just adding it. Yep. Right on. So here, as we said earlier, if you want to do a, a brown butter, a burn was it? You can definitely do it. Um, I didn't do it for this recipe because, as I said, um, the, the brown butter is going to get that butter really brown. And I didn't want to get to that color. But um, you can definitely do it. Well, and also I think that we both are using really high quality butter. So um, right. I'm using Emerald Grassland that is a, a really high quality butter, a European style um, uh, Emerald from, from Canada, but using Isigny butter. I'm uh, using Isigny, yes. Which is a French butter. So a very similar process, high fat content. Yeah. Uh, what should we call the, the good butter? And then quite honestly, I've made a lot of pastry and a lot of baking. I'm not a professional like Romain, but... I really like my baking and my pastries. Uh, so I used to make it with a regular butter. And then the second I've made those recipes again with a high quality butter, my wow. life has changed. Everything's is working. I don't have to swear. I don't have to do oh, yeah. anything. But it's just so it is not just a hype. And then like baker being showing sure off, it truly makes a big difference in the process totally. as well as the flavor. Totally. So here, normally at this stage, because we had our butter kind of liquefy, so the dough is really, uh, is really loose. Huh? It's, uh, it's kind of soft. But don't worry, because we are, as we said, keeping it in the chiller for a minimum of six hours. In my recipe, actually, I'm saying at least 12 hours, but depends on the quantity. If you are doing smaller quantity, obviously, it will cool down faster. And also something that sounds silly, but something I would like to add. So uh, because we're using grams and we're putting things in pots and container, I think it's very important to use like a little spatula or anything to kind of like grab everything from the container we're using. Because sometimes if you just pour it, you might mm -hmm. miss like 10 grams, 15 grams of what you do. So it's very important to make sure we really get everything. Otherwise, the recipe is going to be a little bit off. And, and also what's important because I've been working like that since I'm young because I got all the chef, but whenever, see, we, we just finished that. I will every time, you know, come around, clean nicely the bowl like that. The next day you don't have any dryness around your bowl or, you know, it's, it's nice and clean. Absolutely. We trust the baker. The baker are the, the, the cleanest, the more precise. <laughs> of the of the of the industry, chefs Maybe. tend to be a little more. Uh, I don't know how to say it. I, I don't. I'm, I try to find a good word that's not too offensive. But yes, <laughs> let's just say not as uh, precise. That's what I will say. Um, so the butter. Yeah, there's a question here. How much fat is in the butter? Uh, the butter I'm using is 82% fat. I think yours might be the same. Uh, or yeah, not. I can actually look on the package to be quite exact because I do not know. I don't even know. It is 84%. 84%. So, yeah. yeah. So, usually, usually butter is between 82 to 84%. Um, in some cases, for example, in the US, we find some butter in the supermarket, which is like kind of a lower in fat. So, you will be maybe 78% fat. Probably in that recipe, you might want to reduce just a little bit the egg or the egg yolk 
to avoid having like your uh, um, your batter too liquid because technically what's happening when you have uh, 82% or 84% fat well you have 18% or uh, or 16% of water so when you go to a 78% fat that what you can find in the US in supermarket that that leftover is water so it means you are adding more water from your butter so you might want to reduce at the beginning and a good way to, a good way to know is like a hard, so basically if you take the butter out of the fridge And with a knife, you can go through the butter. You can tell it's probably a lot more water versus a high fat content. It's going to be really hard to cut the butter and it's going to break into pieces where in the higher water content, you're going to just have like a perfect beautiful block. But that's not a good thing. It's, I mean, it's not a good thing. If, if you want a high quality butter, you're going to want something that's a little more sharp. It's going to break and it's going to be way harder to cut. So you can even warm up your knife just to cut through if that helps. Yep, definitely. So now we are going to run the longest live ever because we need to wait 12 hours. <laughs> well, we'll see you in 12 hours. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> so here is the magic. <laughs> the, the TV. And so like uh, we would have added our lemon now, right? If oh, yeah, to... the lemon. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. My bad. I'm sorry. I'm no going worries, too fast. No worries. My bad. Oh. So here, yes, we are definitely adding the lemon. All right. So I'm adding my lemon. I don't know if you already have I'm yours. but Adding, adding my mine. lemon too. So I'm doing a half batch uh, now. I did a full batch yesterday. So I'm going to do only okay. half a lemon, but a full recipe calls for a full lemon, if I'm correct, right? Yes. Again, that's really a matter of like test. You know, if you don't yes. want your, uh, your madeleine to be too lemony, then you just cut down. You don't even have to put it. If you want to put orange zest or mandarin zest, please enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> Make it your own. It's something I, I say a lot uh, when I cook or when I do cooking classes or when I do live or whatever. I tell people to own the recipe. At the end of the day, my palate is different than yours and it's different exactly. than someone else, right? So you got to make what you like. If you don't like something, if you don't like lemon, don't put lemon. It's not the end of the world. As long as your flour, your butter, like the, those quantities matter, obviously, because it's going to make or break your recipe. When it comes to flavors like the vanilla, like the lemon, it's really up to you and then you palate. Exactly, exactly. You know, the, the, the recipe we are giving anytime we do a class or anything, is just like the beginning of something new because at this time, the recipe is yours. So you just create, you know, you, do, you take that skeleton that I like to call, you know, you have the skeleton mm -hmm. of the recipe and then you, you create whatever you, you want. It's funny because that's, that's literally how I would say it. Uh, you have a skeleton. That's usually what I said. I was like, I left you with, with like a, a body and now you can like add hair and then you can add eye color, you know, different colors of eyes. You can really make it your own. Exactly. Uh, you can put uh, thyme in your brown butter. Give a nice test. Sure. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure it will elevate the, the flavor. Yeah. Cool. Have you ever tried butter in a pop tart? Uh, never tried pop tart, so <laughs> yeah, this is it's sir. We're both French, <laughs> we don't do pop tart. <laughs> All right, so we take the now that batter with like uh 12 hours actually more than 12 hours because it's almost 24 hours for mine. I did mine last um, night at like uh, I think it was like 10 30. <laughs> it was a late night batter. <laughs> Um, okay, so before to, uh, to take that batter, we are going to prepare the mold. Yeah. So there is, that's, that's where it's a little bit difficult for Madeleine mold because it depends on, the, on the, the quality, I would say, or not the quality, but the type of, uh, of mold you are using. You are going to prepare it differently. Okay. Um, for example, in my recipe, I know that I call for butter and flour. Um, I realized that with this mold, that specific mold, because it's kind of a silicone coated. I'm okay. just putting a little bit of butter, but I'm, I'm not putting any flour. I don't need to. So this is really going to be your call. You decide what you, based on the tools that you are having. And on the other end, I have like a very classic, like foil aluminum mold. So I definitely have to do flour and butter because otherwise it's they going are going to stick. to stick. So I have to do the full process, but yes. So, They come uh, up with, uh, and I see now they even have like the flexi mold in for Madeleine, don't they? Yes, yes. So for example, if you are using like really silicone mold, like from Demar or, you know, these type of companies, 
then the baking might be a little bit different because okay. on the silicone, your madeleine on the bottom are not taking as fast of a color. So you might need to adjust that baking temperature. It might bake a little bit longer compared to, uh, to a traditional Madeleine mold. So, and then how do we know, um, is, it, is it important to leave the door open? Can we open the door to check it out? Is it open, surely it's going to collapse? Yeah, you, it's, it's usually better to just bake it, not opening it, not opening. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to put a bit of butter. Um, if some of you are like, uh, you know, uh, want to use some of this uh, kind of uh, spray bottle um, on the fat, that's also working. It's not going to give as much of taste of a butter, but it's working. Yeah, I actually was thinking about that because I just got a, a spray. It was like canola, right? So it's like an oil versus to be a butter. And obviously oil doesn't have, as you said, the flavors that butter will give to our madeleine. So go. it's just it's just very light. Huh? We don't want to have any uh, excess of butter. Otherwise, that during the baking is becoming oil, and you will have an oily madeleine. So it's really keep it to avoid that madeleine to stick on the bottom. Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna have my flour. All right. There we go. So far, so good. I'll pull it here from following. Uh, well, that's what we are doing, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's why we are doing this type of live, huh? You know, it's to, it's to be able to give to some of these tips. Yeah. Absolutely. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, like, I mean, I'm not a professional, but I still can do the recipes, but there's no point of us doing it, you know, behind the scenes because that doesn't help you guys, right? If we show you a video, I'm like, this is a Madeleine, but you don't want to make it. <laughs> There's no point, right? So, and even it's true. I think the tips are very important because, again, everybody has different type of ingredients, different type of molds. So that's why I think it's nice to have your opinion on, on different things when we as we go. Exactly. So now I'm going to pipe the Madeleine in the mold. If you don't have any piping bag, uh, you can definitely do it with the spoon. Huh? It, it will do the same job. The piping bag is just to look good uh, on, live, on live. So we look, we look like professional, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to be called on Monday, like, you know, like, all our peers never look at these two guys. <laughs> So in terms of quantities, because obviously we have a different mold, so we know different things. So yeah. how do I know how much I have to fill it? Like, do I have to go like a third of the mold? Like, what's the what's the ratio you would say? Yeah, that's that's uh, that's a tricky question. Um, usually, maybe I will pipe some and I will show you. I mean, it's kind of a, a, a three quarter of the mold. Okay. You know, you don't want to really f like fill it full. Yes. But it needs to. Technically, when it will go inside the oven, um, you know, it will really like uh, uh, go on the level of your, of your Madeleine mold. Okay. You know, it will melt a little yeah. bit and it will yeah. go on the level. It's, it's between a little bit lower than the level to the level. Gotcha. So because you don't it's going want to, to overfill yeah. it. Got it. All right. Let's fill up Madeleine's. You know what? I'm going to do a bigger hole because it's cold now. So here we go. Okay, so I'm not sure if we can if we can see me piping here. Let me up here. Yeah, yeah from over here. Can we see me? Yeah, I think. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you, we can see like the the closest to you, we won't see the top ones, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like where this. am I? Here we go. I'm and I can I can show it. Uh... And also when you pipe, and that's something that even in professional kitchen. I have to say all the time because people do it wrong and then my mix is getting stuck. So, so see, see how I feel it, uh, Romain? Okay, gotcha. So I think like, look at mine. Yeah, that's the good? concept. Yeah. yeah, 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 that's good. So when you hold a piping bag, I see a lot of people squeezing the bottom, right? But 
Yeah. We squeeze the top. Okay. That's the hand that pushes. So what usually then, I'm doing, it's like I come too close around, you know, my uh, my uh, yeah. thumb. And then up, I come to close it. So like that I have a nice pressure happening on the on the piping bag. Exactly. And then as you go, you can twist it. Every time you empty, you twist. So the pressure comes from the top to the bottom. And you can even wrap the top around your finger. I mean, I can't really do it because my piping is too big. But I would usually wrap it around. And that way you have like a nice hold of your uh, piping bag. Yeah, exactly. So with this recipe, uh, here I have 12 madeleine. I still have some leftover. Usually I'm able to do at least on the bigger one, um, at least around 20 madeleine. Um, so I'm going to do two, uh, two bake for that. But uh, yeah, at least we have the first 12. So the one thing is my batter gets, <laughs> it sticks to my bag and doesn't stay in the metal and mold because I think I flowered my, <laughs> my, my oh. mix too good. And, and maybe because your batter is still a little bit cold. Yeah, it's a little cold. So I only also, took it yeah. about a half hour ago, so. Yeah, which is fine, which is fine. Which makes it also sort of out of the pipe, but it's okay. We're gonna make it. And obviously I have more Madeleine, but they are tiny, tiny. But that's cool, you know, it's like breakfast tomorrow is going to be Exactly, nice. so I feel I feel better <laughs> by myself. You know what I mean? Like there's more Madeleine, it's okay. Salut mon Kevin. <laughs> All right, I'm almost there. Did you finish yours? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, I have I have less compared to compared to you. And mine is like very sticking, so I'm like fighting for it to stay in the mold. But so really, to... compared to compared to Madeleine, I really like that color. You know, the color is like really that amber, and uh, it's yes. it, it's gorgeous to to look. And uh, <laughs> something that I, that I texted you last slide, I was saying that uh, the batter tasted delicious. Uh, yeah, raw, <laughs> which which to me it's kind of like always like my taste taster. Whether I make uh, uh, crepes or brioche or whatever I do, I always like to try the dough raw. I don't know why, but to me it's like it's usually a good sign. If I like the batter raw, then I know it's it's usually a good. It usually, thing. will taste good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not saying you should do it. That's just my thing. All right, I just got two more. I'm still fighting with this one. Doesn't want to leave me. There we go. Uh, there is there is the, that pastry team now from uh, LA connecting. Like there is Kevin ah, there and, and Sylvain and uh, ready for a Madeleine battle. I'm sure you guys will rock that Madeleine. <laughs> but it's not going to test as good as mine. There you go. The master. <laughs> uh, the master Madeleine. All right. There we go. Do we have to um, like make sure it's nice and even or... No, you can just like uh, it's it just will... going to like melt because of exactly. the butter content. Exactly, it will melt. It will melt uh, in the in the oven. Awesome. So we're just gonna bake it. Yep, let's go. Awesome. So I'm gonna put mine on the tray just in case it overflows. There we go. In the let's oven, start. it goes, and I'm gonna do five minutes because yeah, mine's a little bit smaller. I will start with the eight minutes. It usually takes ten to eleven minutes in my oven. Um, but uh, yeah, please save on IGTV or story. Yes, I will repost um, at the end of the live. I will post it on my feed and then I will download uh, the, the file and I will give it to uh, Romain as well. So if he wishes to, he can also post it on his uh, timeline. So For sure. either yeah. way, you'll have the live and uh, you are not left alone. We promise you because we know it's not always easy to get on those lives with time or, you know, they get too long. You have to, I don't know. Go for a run, walk the dog, whatever the case may be. So <laughs> don't worry, I'll stay, I'll stay on the page forever. So does the batter need to warm up a little before piping? It, it doesn't need to, it's just easier to pipe. So you know? it's literally what happened just now when Ro Roma had his tempered mine. I only took it about half hour ago, so it was still cold. So I pretty much struggled a little bit when I was piping. The, the, the mix would stick to my piping bag and to my finger and it would not stick to the mold. So that, that would be the difference because the butter is, is still quite firm. Yeah, but on the final result, it's not going to change much because anyway, your butter is going to melt in the, in the oven. Yeah. So that's uh, definitely not going to be an issue, you know? It's just it's easier. Not... Yes, because something I mentioned earlier, is like it's a lot of butter, right? So we'll pretty much have the same amount of butter and flour. So think about that. It's definitely going to just 
melt away. And, uh, and the sugar. Huh? Uh, so yes. we have 130 grams of flour for 100 grams of sugar. Yeah. So this also is going to. Yes. That's why I've struggled in the past. Makes sense. <laughs> there you go. There you go. And that's why you guys come on live because uh, you, you, know, you know what happened. And look, look at me. Even I, I, I did it wrong. I mean, not wrong, but I struggled too. <laughs> but it's also important to have it kind of cold because if, if really it's too much of a room temperature, you know that will, butter will be kind of melty yeah. and then on yeah. the piping, it's like... Uh, it, it will it's be very, a disaster. <laughs> it will be very difficult. Yeah, definitely. Right. Is cool. there any question? Because I can't... I'm too far from the camera, but I don't know if you can scroll and see um, or yeah. if you see in the question ah, box. Can you please tell me more about the special flour? Did you say it was a whole wheat higher protein flour? So, yes. Uh, and I'm not doing any ad for this type, for this brand. Huh? That's the flower I use. <laughs> yes, there is, yes. <laughs> there is no other no way if you're watching. Pay him. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it's a it's a, a white whole wheat sprouted flower. So we use a lot of this in in baking usually because it's a 14% protein, so it's a high protein flower. We don't really use it usually for a, a cake type. But I noticed that in this specific uh, uh, madeleine or specific cake, it gives really a very short bite. So that's, that's why it's very interesting. Now, whenever we use this, usually the sprouted wheat flour is actually um, a flour. So how do they do it? They, they, they harvest the, the wheat. They put a little bit of water on top of that wheat. It sprout. Then they dry it and they make the flour. But why? The concept is as soon as your wheat is kind of sprouting, you are um, the, the amylase are kind of working on the sugar of your wheat. So it's easier for your system to digest. So I'm not, going, I'm not going to say it's, it's healthier to use that, uh, that flour for a madeleine with the amount of butter and sugar we are adding in it. <laughs> That's not working. It's not the concept, but in baking world, that's why we are doing this. Uh, we are we are using this flour. Yeah, for sure. And uh, to be perfectly honest, I couldn't find uh, that exact flour. Uh, unfortunately, um, the brands were not delivering to Canada. I did ask a friend that we are both in common, my Canadian plug, Sarah Do Duffy. Uh, he did have some spreaded flour, but he didn't have any spreaded wheat flour. So I used uh, a really high quality uh, wheat flour too but uh, it's not spreaded. So I'm not going to have the exact same result, um, but uh, I, I promise you guys, I, I try my best to find it. <laughs> no, I know it. It's, I, and really, I discovered that type of flower in the US. I didn't know that in France. I'm not even sure if in France we are doing this. Yeah. But uh, in terms of a bread, it's very, very interesting because if you, as an artisan type bread, you are usually having more hydration. So the, that flower is absorbing a lot of water, not because of the protein content, but really because of that sprouting effect. So, and, and when I say it absorbs more, it means that compared to a normal wheat flour, let's say I will hydrate at 75%, and then this one at, at the same percentage, the dough will look more firmer. So usually more water in the bread, it's a better crumb opening, it's a better conservation. So that's why this flour is like, wow, amazing. I really like it. And it's, uh, I think it's also, I'm sure I'm going to add three more minutes because my Madeleine is not baked yet. So I'm just okay. going to increase it. Um, but uh, I feel like it's, it's, uh, it's starting to be a trend. Um, I think not just in cooking, but I see a lot more chefs, uh, bakers and pastry chefs using a lot more sprouted, um, spreaded ingredients. Because I thought there's such days, I think a good nutrition uh, aspect to it. And again, like we're not saying it's healthier, but uh, healthy and nutritional is very different. Mm -hmm. um, so I can see it's, it's starting to pop up a little bit more in, in, uh, in menus and recipes. So can we substitute with high protein bread flour? I, I would substitute maybe just with bread flour if you, uh, you know, um, that, that would work the same. Um, but again, as I said earlier, uh, this type of flour, so it's a bread flour. So on this Madeleine, we're not going to get really that, that perfect, bump it's going to get kind of a, a heel you know like uh, it's it's coming up and coming down but not that perfect bump because the flower is just not made for madeleine but again that's because of the texture you are getting on the final result for me it's like so cool yeah i, I think it's i mean that's what i like i was saying earlier in the live it's like i like that 
we try different things, especially like both being French and, you know, the French culture when it comes to uh, classic recipes, it's pretty strong. And you're going to headbutt with, uh, you know, people that are here to, I would say, promote the very classic and ancient way of doing things. And they can tell you you're wrong. If you're not doing it that way, it's wrong. Um, and I think it's probably why we're both not in France right now. But <laughs> but I think it's nice to, to try to find evolution because, um, like I said uh, the other day, I was like, I think we are not. A recipe that was made in 1920 and 1850 was adapted to the people that were living in 1850 and 1920. We're in 2021, things have changed, diet have changed, the planet has changed. So we have to be conscious of what's going on. And if we are going to starve the planet the same way we used to do it when it was half of the population, you know what I mean? It's going to be a disaster. So I think it's important that we as chefs and bakers and pastry chefs, we adapt uh, to the environment and to where the world is going so we can try to, to improve as well, right? So it's important to be conscious of that too. I mean, at least personally, that's what I think. <laughs> De definitely. And, and I, I totally agree with you saying that, you know, in France, we are like attached to that culture, but sometimes yeah. too much. Yeah. Too much in a sense that recently I did uh, Queen Yaman and, uh, you know, I, I, I had a, like a, a stencil, which was Fleur de Lys. Yes. So the Fleur de Lys, okay, represent France in a way, yes. you know, that, that thing. But then I got some people who were like, oh, it would have been nice if you were putting that Hermine. So, which is the logo of the of the Brittany? So I'm like, okay, um, you know, I mean, I created that Queen Yaman. It's definitely not the typical Queen Yaman. And why will I put the, that Hermine? So that, this is why that uh, Queen Yaman class that we are having uh, on April 18, it's called the Parisian Queen Yaman, just because <laughs> it's it's something different, you know, like the the even the way I'm going to make that Queen Yaman is very very different compared to uh, the traditional Queen Yaman. Yeah, but in France we are all about how it's supposed to be done, and yeah. you know it's. Um... And it's 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 true. I mean, like I and I get it. And people will jump on your throat um, and be like, <laughs> "No, this is the way. This is the only way. You're wrong. It's going to be horrible. You're like you must leave the country right away. You've been banned." <laughs> but uh, I 100 percent believe that. Uh, oh, and my Madeleines are calling me too, and 100 percent believe that there should be room for changes and there should be room for. Wow! Look at those. They so are very I, cute. I added two more minutes on my uh, on my Madeleine. So we'll be, I think, I think we'll be maybe 11 minutes. Ooh la la. Look, Look at, at that. This Amazing. Little, beautiful Madeleines. They do so have are, like a, they're very, they, I mean, I can tell my ov my oven is not even completely on the, on the cuisson because this one's a little more baked than these ones. Okay. Or maybe I just didn't feel them the same way. It could be that too. But they definitely, they don't have, I would say the bump, but it's just like a nice, they're like beautiful, like round dome. Exactly. Yeah. It's not like the, the typical uh, bump, but uh, you have that dome. And again, you will see after a few minutes when it cooled down, the, the yeah. texture of the Madeleine is just like, whew. And it smells absolutely fantastic. I mean, <laughs> I can tell you that right now, it smells amazing. The butter, and it's funny because although we did not have that brown butter, I can still have those like nutty, like that nuttiness from the butter the still has like a nice aroma. And the nuttiness also, because we used in both cases, you didn't use a sprouted uh, whole wheat flour, but you did use a whole wheat flour. Yes. And that yes. nuttiness come also from the bran, you know, like caramelizing with the sugar. Yeah. So you get that nuttiness also from that. Yeah, they are like, oh my God. I, you know, I love my lens so much. I'm so excited. I'm just going to try to see. Salut, I feel Nicolas. like I'm a little far. So I'm just gonna like, obviously this is the small version. Maybe if I do that. Perfect. But my, my 30 seconds and it's coming out. There you go. Ooh, so I'm just gonna tease, I'm gonna be the teaser while yours are still cooking. <laughs> <laughs> my it's little nice. teeny Madeleines. I've had that mold for so long. I had to uh, dig it out of my garage because I haven't made them in quite a while. But you know what? Now that I have that recipe, I think I might be making them more often than not. <laughs> <laughs> and it's quite easy, you know, it's like a butter. You do that in like 10, 15 minutes, you know, time Absolutely. to scale everything and then chiller. Really, and really yeah. easy. Can you, can you freeze it? The butter? Yeah. I would, not say, I, I would say you can freeze it, but I wouldn't keep it long, long time in the freezer. You know, maybe right. over a week or... Well, at the pace I'm eating Madeleine, I can tell you, I don't think I need to <laughs> live in the freezer, to be quite honest. 
Wow. See, look at that. So as I said, you know, you have the bump, but it's really not like a very yeah. neat bump. Yeah. But just because of the type of flower. Well, I feel like as they cool down, the, the bump is actually almost more pronounced. So I feel like the, the surrounding oh, yeah. of the Madeleine are kind of like collapse, collapsing a little bit, but the bump is staying. So they're a little more bumpy now that they were right at the oven. So we can, uh, we'll take it out from the, from the plate. Get, uh, I make a smaller one. Okay, get that. So normally it should, it should come it should come pretty pretty easy from the from the pan. Yep, here we go. See, I can still have that little bump. Yeah, 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 it's there. Huh? So guys, it works. <laughs> it it does work. It's you know you you sold us on we're not gonna have it the same. Ah, uh, you know what? I disagree. You did fantastic because we do have a bump. <laughs> And I'm not even a professional, so if I can do it, I can do it. <laughs> so now you have a lot of different ways to have your Madeleine. You can definitely just keep it this way. Um, actually, when they are fresh out of the oven, they seem a little bit more dry. Or not dry, but kind of drier That if you were to wait at least. Uh, look at that. Trying to do like, as you speak, I'm doing the modeling of the yeah, Madeleine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when, when they are like fresh out of the oven, they every time seems a little bit, um, little bit drier compared to yes. when you wait at least an hour. Why? Because it's technically your fat of the butter, which is going to travel in the cake. But this works for any type of cake. Whenever you do a cake, usually it's better after an hour than when it cooled down because you have the fat of your cake traveling and you get more moist. And then we can always add a little bit of a, wow, that bump just makes me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of things in life, you know, that uh, that, that makes us happy. But um, yeah, and exactly. And you have one side that has been uh, dry baked and one side has been cover baked with more moisture. So you're always going to have exactly that one side usually is a little more moist and this one has more a bit of a crisp. Um, but we can also add some simple syrup or like an infusion if you wanted to, but right? Actually, see, I prepared like a, a small piping bag of honey. See, so, I, I'm, I'm so good with the plugs today. It's just like, <laughs> it's like we, we worked on that before. <laughs> so what if you wanted to, uh, to add a little bit of honey, then, you know, you just take your, uh, you just take your Madeleine. You come to give like a small, small hole on the, on the Madeleine. And then let me open that piping bag. Yes, just to confirm, we will. I will be posting the live and I will share with uh, Roman. So you'll have the live again. Yes. And then, you know, you can come just with your piping bag here. There we go. And see, you, um, have, you have that honey. That honey right now is still a little bit on top, but it's going to kind of get absorbed by the, by the Madeleine. And you can and have like also a, add some, some icing sugar on top if you wanted to. Roman, I have everything for you. <laughs> All right, okay, so, so just so you guys know, we talk, but I did not know about any of this. This is literally just pure, like, you know, it's like we connected from the heavens. <laughs> so here, technically, wait, let me, let me mix it. Because this morning, uh, uh, with my wife, we did like uh, some, um, um, how do you call that? Hot cross bun. Hot. And uh, with the hot cross bun, I prepared a, a glaze. And so here I have like a powder, sugar, and orange juice. Nice. And just like, as you can see, it's quite liquid. And here what we can do, let me come with one of the Madeleine. Up, you will come with the upside down. Can you see it? Yeah, Up, upside down. So the same way as you would cut an eclair, for example. Exactly. Now what's important is to do it when the Madeleine is still warm. So like that, the glaze will fix nicely. If ever your Madeleine is cold and you want to glaze it, then I will suggest to take that same glaze, put it like 10, 15 seconds in the microwave to have the glaze warm on the cold Madeleine. So it runs, yeah. So it coats exactly. nicely and then kind of like falls over. Exactly. So what is your take on uh, dipping them in, in chocolate? You can dip them in the chocolate. For me, it's, it, you need your chocolate to make sure that it's like tempered, you know? 
So like that, you you have the that uh, crack. You know, when you eat, yes. you have the you have the texture. I think that's what it's cool when you dip with chocolate. Otherwise, I'm not a big fan of dipping in chocolate if it's not tempered because it's just messy and uh, you don't have that shine. And you don't have the shine exactly. Or you can make it. What about a chocolate glaze? So the same idea as what you did, um, but like you know, I think a lot of people are seeing more and more the glaze on top of cakes. So if we were to do a chocolate glaze and do the same process, uh, pour the glaze, I uh, can't remember exactly uh, what temperature it is for a glaze. I can't remember on top of mine. Is it, uh, is it 47 degrees? Uh, wait, we're talking uh, Celsius Just, or Fahrenheit? Uh, Celsius. Celsius, uh, 47. Yeah, 47 would be if your madeleine is cold. Right, okay. Yes. Because right now, the madeleine is warm, so it's technically just it like a room, room temperature uh, okay. glaze. Okay. And, and then, and we, we can, we'll see in a few minutes, huh, it will set. And you have that, uh, that glaze coming around and you, that texture that you will have uh, on top. That's awesome. Mouth watering, yes. And uh, not only is mouth watering, but you, you'll be one of, the, <laughs> one of the person that can actually try those. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> you are in the VAP seats. <laughs> She's the lucky one. <laughs> She's the lucky one. <laughs> The two, the two side to side, will both have, uh, both have, exactly, exactly. We have the two, two side by side. We'll be able to eat, uh, eat the madeleines. Yep. And there was a question earlier. Oops, I can't click on it. Uh, oh no, there's no question. It was just in the box. But is there any question for us, uh, for Romain? If you have any uh, baking questions, I'm only his assistant today. I'm his commie, so. Uh, <laughs> I will only uh, chime in if I know anything, but I will let the expert talk. So if you have any question about baking, uh, if you have any cooking, I can also answer that. But today it's about Madeleine. Oh, I have a question. Can we, uh, can we tell people um, why Madeleine La Jackie or are we keeping this as a secret? <laughs> no, we can, we can say it. So technically, my name is Romain Jackie Cyril Dufour. And the small story behind that is that I, every time was kind of a shame of Jackie because, you know, Jackie in France, it's like, uh, it, it's not a very nice name. And uh, I, one day I have a friend who, because we are working together and he saw my, uh, my passport <laughs> and he's like, wait a second, wait a second, your name is Jackie. And from that, he was calling me Jackie like every day. And from a friend to a friend to a friend and now like all my friends are calling me Jackie. And I was like, you know what? Let me be proud of that. Own it. Yeah, I will own it. So now it's like Jackie La Boulange. Uh, <laughs> so, Which works perfectly. And, I think it's awesome. I love it. I personally so, am a fan of it. Technically, it's the Madeleine. It's Madeleine à la Romain. But Madeleine à la Romain, it's not fun. Madeleine à la Jackie is kind of more fun. So that's why. Well, especially here in North America where they call us Romaine, right? So they're going to be like, right. is there like lettuce inside the Madeleine? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So that's can the little story. Bake, oh, can you bake chocolate or Nutella? I would say maybe it'll have to be hard, no? Will it be no. to be frozen? No? Yeah. Uh, I, I would suggest, uh, I mean, if you freeze it, yes, because it's kind of fast in the oven. Yeah. Um, but then the problem is that if you do that with your madeleine, so let's say you kind of pipe, you know, a little bit of chocolate and then you come to poke it in your, uh, in your batter. I'm not sure the madeleine will have really that bump. You know, probably the madeleine will be more flat. Now, if it's okay with you to have a madeleine a little bit flatter, then yes, you can do that always after the bake. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, we can always do it after the same way you did the honey, right? Exactly. You would just come with like, a, you know, with the knife. You would poke the top here, up, make a small hole, and then come with your piping bag and pipe some uh, Nutella or chocolate or jam or whatever you want. Yeah, whatever, exactly. I do love Nutella, though, I must admit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm, yeah. One of, I'm one of these people. I, I, I'm ashamed, but also uh, I, can't, I can't help it. So see on the glaze when it uh, settles? It's beautiful. A nice shine. Yeah. Shall we try it? Ah, like yes. We haven't tried it. <laughs> I mean, shall we? I want to try it. So I'm I will. I will it. actually try the one I put a little bit of honey. That's mm. a, that's my favorite one. <laughs> it's nice. It's very light. It's light, and you see. It's yeah. Oops, I'm pushing my table, but if I can barely see like the nice, the nice chew into it, like it's like very like soft, but there's like a nice resistance. It's not dense at all. It's actually very light. It, it's very light. 
And whenever you try, I mean, and I'm sure with the whole wheat, you have a little bit of that, where it's like very short bite. You yeah. don't chew yes. it for a very no, long time. No, it, it melts right away. Like mm -hmm. you see, like I'm still talking. When Madeleine is long gone, <laughs> <laughs> it melts away in your oh mouth. It's very, very flavorful. The honey comes through. The lemon is, as you said, the lemon is really just a hint. You know what I mean? Like it's not super yeah. strong lemony. It's just kind of like a second layer. It really brings the dish together. It's super awesome. And technically, the vanilla what just comes to, <laughs> to enhance all of that, you know? Yes. It's like I always say, I tell people whether it's when I cut a recipe, so you have the base layer, right? So that's what's going to be here when you put uh, whatever you're cooking in your mouth, you're going to have the base flavors. And then if you don't have any other layers, it's gone. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you don't have that feeling of what well, yumminess, gourmandise, uh, mm -hmm. like we say in French. But all these little layers, like the lemon, the honey, the vanilla, this is where you build the second, the third layer. That's what's going to linger in your mouth. That's what, to me, creates the memories. Because, especially with baking and pastries, those are what we call miniardies at the restaurant. Well, that's the last thing you're going to have before you leave. Whether you take it home with you, or you're going to have with you coffee, or just after dessert. And that's when you're in your cab, when you're in your car, when you, when you walk away from the restaurant and you're, whatever, you're going to your, to your place, that's what stays in your palate, right? So that's going to be the memory that you associate with departing uh, the restaurant or wherever the bakery you had it. Definitely. So to me, it's very important to have those second, third, fourth notes because they are the ones going to linger in your palate. And if you don't have that, it's almost like you're going to, you know, you leave the restaurant, but you still want to carry the experience for another half hour. And that's what I love about those little notes that we add into, uh, into cooking. It's like very romantic, very like storytelling. And, uh, and I think that's why we, we do what we do, right? We don't just make food. It's, it, to me, it's more of a story and, uh, and, you know, like an experience. I couldn't have said it better. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> uh, I'm just here, you know, I'm just here Hands to down. make you too proud. I'm your, like, you know, like, you're the showman. <laughs> I'm just here to make you look <laughs> No, no, it's do true. Have... It's true, yeah. It's, uh... Or a cup of tea. Yes, a cup of tea. You know what? I think... Uh... Coffee or tea works either way. That's what I was saying earlier. Yeah. Even like uh, a chocolate, a hot chocolate. I've been on the hot chocolate trend lately. I don't know why I'm back to my uh, childhood. <laughs> that works too. All right. Any question, guys? Or are we... Uh... Poetic. <laughs> yes. Yeah, if you have any questions, we're going to leave you guys. Um, I will take a photo of the Madeleine too that I'll post on my story for you guys to see. Um, I will repost the live as well, as I mentioned earlier, so you guys can refer back. The recipe is on my highlights. Um, I will share the file with uh, Romain, so he also has it. So if you do not follow me, but you still want the recipes, you can jump to uh, Romain's Instagram. Um, if you follow me, I highly encourage you to follow Romain. Um, he's amazing and he's also a very, very nice guy, which is rare because having two French guys that are not assholes is a pretty rare sight. So you should take <laughs> advantage of this. Um, and these videos are really good. No, like he's the one filming it, but uh, he has someone behind the scene that's doing a really good job My of wife. putting his stuff together. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's not only a, a good recipe, it's also very pleasant to look at. So uh, definitely give him a follow. And if there is no more question, we're going to wrap it up and I'm going to eat this delicious yep. Madeleine. And not Madeleine, no. like I've heard no. so many horrible <laughs> names. It's <a> Madeleine. <laughs> Let's see. Madeleine à la Jackie. <laughs> awesome. No more questions. Great. So if you want to say your last words. Um, again, I mean, all the recipes, you can find it from... This recipe is actually on my website, on chefromandufour.com. Uh, with plenty other recipes, croissant, sourdough, how to make your sourdough, um, and stuff like that. So go go and visit and uh, follow on Instagram for sure. Exactly. Follow us on all social media. Um, I also have now a YouTube channel if you want to, like, it's time to plug stuff, right? So I also have a YouTube channel <laughs> where you can find me uh, cooking all type of recipes uh, from all over the world. I don't discriminate. I don't cook just French food. It's called Frenchy Cooks. Um, very original. Uh, but if you tap my name, Romain Avril, you can also find it uh, pretty much also. I'm on TikTok and also the recipes. I'm pretty much on every social media. Um, I can see that. And wow. <laughs> are you on, um, a very, actually a quick question before you leave. Are you on Clubhouse yet? No, not yet, but uh, I keep hearing a lot about it. 
You should, because I think your expertise would be uh, would be most welcomed on the platform. Oh, nice. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, be, I'll talk to you after uh, sure. to let you know Great. more about it. Great. Anyway, thanks to all of you. I'm going to switch side because I am not able to close the live from <laughs> in front of my table. <laughs> I wish I say thank you to all of you. I have to be in a weird position. Uh, thank you to all of you for coming on. Thank you so much for Romain to join the live. It's always awesome to do something with him. I learn all the time and I make delicious food. So I'm always happy. So <laughs> thanks thank to you, all to of you, you. Romain. Thank you and for we'll this you opportunity. Soon. That was nice. Always. Merci à tous et à bientôt. À bientôt. Bye bye. Au revoir.